failure, am I right? Uh, I went better than I expected. I was hoping for a better failure. Uh, I own a popsicle company, so it's a little bit harder for me to get on the really sad level um, or, 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 or lower. So this was a really intense experience for me. Um, and as we go through it, hopefully I'll be able to convey that. But uh, my story tonight starts with popsicles and ends with a big pile of dead Christmas trees. And you might be saying to yourself, um, all Christmas trees are pretty much dead and they all end up in a pile somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, started with popsicles. So in 2009, I was working at AIG. Uh, it wasn't really my dream job, but it was a great job. Uh, I was laid off uh, during what I, uh, they call the financial crisis or several other things, I think, that CNN kind of took and ran with. And while it's never fun to lose your job, like I said, it wasn't necessarily my dream job, and I didn't choose to immediately get back into insurance. I uh, have an amazing family, and one of my brothers, my oldest brother, is an anthropologist, and each year we would visit him wherever he happened to be in Latin America, uh, Ecuador or Panama or throughout Central America. And in addition to being an anthropologist, he was also a very, very, very good tour guide. And one thing that he would always uh, kind of take us to on the tours were these uh, paleta carts, which is essentially like our popsicle, but it's uh, a superior version, let's just say. Uh, fresh fruit, interesting flavors, um, has been made within the last week or so. It just tastes completely different, completely amazing. So this was after college, and each year we would go down there, and we would sit on the beach and do different things. But we would also always kind of find these popsicles and uh, dream about maybe this would be a fun thing to bring back to the US. And it kind of made sense, like people are into farmer's markets and uh, artisan things, people like good things, all that type of stuff. So um, back to getting laid off. So that happened, I decided let's just do this popsicle business thing. I was 25, um, my brother's couch happened to be available and uh, I moved in. Um, I had bought like a condo, you know, like that's what you do when you work at AIG. So I had rented that, moved onto my brother's couch, um, and started this business. Uh, and it was the best thing that I've ever done. Um, it was really, really fun. Everyone that I loved and everyone that loved me came in out to help me. Um, didn't really have any idea what I was doing, and there was certain a lot of failure, certainly a lot of failures, but there was no expectation. Um, if I made it through that year, then I figured I just had a great story to tell. Uh, and as time went along, it just, it blew up. People loved it. I remember the first time when I kind of realized, like, this is a real thing, um, it was May because the festival was in Serenby and it was named May Day. And I was down there, I think I had brought 300 popsicles and I had sold them by like 3 p.m. or something. Uh, I went to whatever the cafe there was and brought, bought myself a celebratory beer, pulled out my phone, and both of my brothers had been calling me for the last hour. They were out of popsicles at our regular spot on North Avenue in North Highland, if you guys are familiar, and people were just, like, upset. Um, <laughs> like, not getting a popsicle makes people upset sometimes. Uh, this isn't my failure, by the way. They all went to the kitchen. Uh, and we dug everything we could out of our freezer. And these were flavors that were good and bad and testing and everything. People kind of loved that. People loved to be a, a part of what you were building. Um, so this is the first year. Things are going really well. After May Day, another month later, it gets so busy. All these people I told you have been helping me. I asked my brother if he wanted to join me. Uh, he was a lawyer, a prosecutor in Gwinnett County. Um, much different job. Uh, he can tell you that story one day, but uh, he said yes. Um, my dad wrote him a letter urging him not to, and he said, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Um, so here we were. I mean, it's, it was great. It was like a dream. Um, we worked so, 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 so hard. Uh, we tried everything we could. If anyone asked us to do something, we said yes. And the people that we started to meet, like, we loved, too. Like, they were amazing. They were exactly... I, everything couldn't have gone any better. Um, we worked so hard, though. One thing to kind of put that into context is we, we had what was called like summer weight. Um, 
and drive time. I'll explain those two terms because I think they kind of help explain how much work we were doing. Summer weight was, I weigh 205-ish now. This is my winter weight. I've gotten soft as we've been um, in business for more years. But my summer weight was about 170, 165, nice and gaunt. Uh, could see like sinews, pretty gross. Because uh, you missed a lot of meals. Like the meals were basically what you could eat when you happened to be traveling. And the traveling was drive time. And that was the best time because when you're driving, you couldn't be making popsicles or selling popsicles. All you could be doing was driving. So. Needless to say, we had a ton of success. It was a ton of fun. Uh, then the first winter came. Uh, it was just Nick and I, so we were a little bit afraid that everyone was going to forget about what we had even done, but people will stop buying popsicles. That's what happens. We have four seasons. Um, winter isn't the best one for us. And so we went, we traveled. Um, we each went our separate ways. We kind of had a lot of time together. Uh, and the next year started. We hired a few people. Same story, get down to summer weight, drive time's great, we're making popsicles, opportunities everywhere. Um, and the summer comes, and I mean the winter comes, and it gets slow again, and we've hired these people, and it's a little bit different, because um, you're starting to think about other people. And Nick and I were in LA visiting, my brother, the anthropologist that had been in the field was now in LA, he had got his first uh, job, and we were at a friend's house, and uh, this person knocks at the door, and. It's like this surfer dude elf, um, and he's delivering a live Christmas tree. And Nick and I sit there kind of watching the process, but also like looking at each other like, this makes complete sense to us. We have uh, nothing to do in December. Um, it's eco-friendly. Uh, we've got a bunch of trucks, and we've got a bunch of people that we need to pay. Um, so it just made sense. Uh, we. We're in the process of looking for a farm, so we had a place to keep the trees. And so we kind of said, yeah, I mean, we should probably do this. If we want to continue to grow our business, we kind of need to make it a, a full year thing. So get back into our third year. Um, more employees. We're working really, really hard. Same story. Everything's a dream. Everything's great. Um, and fall starts to come, and we're like, man, should we do this Christmas tree thing? Like, it seems like a real great idea. But then we got to be like working and stuff in winter. Uh, but the logic, I guess, prevailed. We decided we were going to try it. We started calling uh, the Christmas tree farms. And we don't know the lingo. It's like when you're buying the same, actually, when you buy popsicle equipment, you don't know the lingo. They're like, what are you talking about? That doesn't exist, mainly because they're speaking Spanish. But uh, <laughs> calling the Christmas tree people was the same way, and no one really they're like, we're, you want to sell the live trees? And we're like, yeah, they do it in California. We saw it. Uh, and they're like, no. And we're like, we want to buy like 70. And they're like, no, I don't know. We eventually get a hold of this guy. At, I, I don't remember. We went to like a tree show, and uh, he had a nice firm handshake, handsome man. Uh, he was going to do it. And he seemed to have his stuff together. He told us. This is what you got to do. This is how much you got to water them. This is how I'm going to get them to you. They're going to be bald and burlapped. It's going to be easy. Nothing you can mess up. So we do it. We say, man, this guy's he's good. So we'll do it. Uh, we got the trucks. We got the people. And so on Thanksgiving, the night of Thanksgiving, this winter has been really mild. That winter might have been mild, but I know the night of Thanksgiving wasn't mild. It was snowing. Um, and uh, we were unloading these trees, and it's hard to really explain because you're used to trees, and trees are like kind of heavy anyway when they're cut down, but when they're not cut down, they've got, I mean, not as big as this circle, obviously, but like this big full of dirt. It weighs about 300 pounds, and that's if you're, it basically doesn't matter. You can have a tree like this big or bigger, and that's what the ball and burlap's going to weigh. It's ridiculous. It's so heavy. Uh, so it's the truck driver. Think ends up showing up at like 2 or 3 a.m., something ridiculous. Uh, we're unloading the trees, trying to stay positive. This is this new business. We'll figure it out, right? Everything works out. Um, so that was interesting, uh, but we did it. Go have our Thanksgiving meals, and people like to get their trees after Thanksgiving. Um, people have a lot of things about their trees that they like, which I'll talk about later. Um, and so, we get the trees, we take them, we go back, have Thanksgiving. The next morning we go down there, we pick up some of the trees, 
and we start delivering them. Um, they're in a, a burlap sack. Um, you obviously can't just set a burlap sack in people's house, so we've got pots that we've ordered. We've got like drip trays. Um, that's really all we've got. And we've got our elf outfits, which look fabulous. <laughs> Uh, my name was Chimney. We have Sprinkles the Elf. Uh, you can still meet these guys today, still around. Great, great elves. Um, so we sold these trees really well. Uh, we had built a lot of brand trust, and people really loved us, and they just assumed we knew what we were doing. Um, and I think this is going to kind of get to the hardest part of this. We really had no idea what we were doing. And when we started with popsicles, we let people in and they grew with us. And now we have this following of people that were with us kind of because they trusted us and because they wanted to support us. Um, and so we really didn't want to let them down. Uh, so Chimney, the elf, puts on his suit. Um, a lot of the people that we worked with that were in town, pretty much all of them, uh, put on their elf suits and we hit the road. And to start with, it was just really hard work. Um, people have their trees upstairs, different places, got to carry them, they're real heavy. Um, so that was to start with. Then you kind of get to like the logistics, that, that's the logistics, then you kind of get to like the customer satisfaction part. Um, this doesn't really look like a Christmas tree to me. This uh, isn't a Christmas tree actually. <laughs> All right, well, um, should we bring it back down, or do you want it still? All right, you keep it. All right, well, let us know. Uh, we're here. I'm Chimney. Give me a call. This is my cell. Uh, so we get this through these deliveries. People are like, there's people that like it. There's people that don't like it. There's people that really don't like it, and they just don't want it. Um, and then it gets kind of into this these trees are now existing in the world, and we've dropped off 30 of them. And we're just thinking about it, because we're watching the other trees that we haven't yet delivered. And uh, they are talking, we're just, I mean, it's a terrifying feeling, but we're like, that's, what could go wrong? Uh, nothing, right? So the needles kind of start to fall out. That happens with trees, right? So we say, are you watering it the amount we said? And they're like, yeah, I think so. I was like, well, it's a problem if you water too little, but it's also you can't water too much. Those are both bad. And if it's near a heater, that's bad too. So just make sure you're doing everything perfectly. Uh, and then we kind of get to the point where, all right, uh, we, we get, and this was probably, I don't know if this was the second or third week, but one of the guys was like, no, this isn't just like a watering problem. And I pull up to his driveway uh, with someone else. We kind of had to always go with teams of two because the things were so heavy. And the tree didn't look like dead, like a dead Christmas tree. It looked like it had been dead for maybe like two years. And it had been in a forest composting. And it was really a terrible, terrible feeling. And we tried to like go in his house with our broom. I remember being like this long and like sweep up his needles. Uh, but yeah, so, but our, we called Andy, our tree guy with the firm handshake. And he said, uh, he said, oh, this is what happened. It was really cold that night when we drove down. So a few of them on the outside got shocked. Like the ones that were on the outside of the truck, they got shocked. So that, I'm sorry you had to deal with that, but you should be fine. Tell the other people with needle problems, it's, it's gonna be good. Uh, so the next week we start delivering again, um, but we're like, you're, when, you're, when you're doing this, you're like walking with such trepidation. <laughs> and every second you're look, and I, I, I really am sensitive to people's first reactions anyway. Like to this day when I hand someone a popsicle, I'm watching them and I need like some type of approval, whether they like look at me and smile or whatever they want to do. I still, I still kind of, or just don't throw it down in the trash can really. Um, but I'd be looking for that with these tree things. It just didn't really ever happen. And people were either just nice, so nice that they wouldn't say anything or else uh, would say something and we would try to figure it out. And 
We did that for another weekend. It's getting closer to Christmas, and uh, <laughs> we, we go through this, and gah, so I told you about the needles, and <laughs> these are legitimate complaints, all of them, so I'm never saying anything bad about any of these customers. Um, but after the first weekend, we're in our elf outfits, uh, taking phone calls back at HQ. So they don't look great, we know that. We find out that the branches aren't strong enough to support an ornament. And <laughs> yeah, then we find out that the pots are beginning to break. Like, the pots are not made for 300 pounds of awkwardly positioned burlap. And so when the pot breaks, obviously, water goes everywhere. Um, it's not good, and we're delivering to like Virginia Highlands nice family houses that do not want to have standing water on their floor. Um, but we keep going, man. Like, we're going to do this, and something is going to change. Our guy, Andy, he told us this was going to work. Uh, so what do we do next? We go through the third weekend. I think there's three weekends in tree elf season. I, I don't, I'm, the business is still in existence, but I'm no longer involved. It was, it was too much on my soul. Um, so let me just read us kind of a list of, of what were the next problems. Um, you might not have been able to guess them. If you want to guess, for, feel free to yell them out. Uh, we had a praying mantis infestation. <laughs> Someone had a, uh, I guess one of the trees we delivered had a bunch of praying mantis eggs in it. <laughs> and the eggs hatched. So that was a praying mantis infestation. Um, what was that? A squirrel? I can't see, it's so weird up here. Uh, no squirrels, that would have been good. Uh, there, we had a person that had not just their arm where they may have touched the tree, but beyond a rash growing onto their whole torso area. And they called me and asked me what I, they should do. Ch and so Chimney's working on it, and so. I could have called Andy, the guy with the firm handshake, but uh, I would figured he probably didn't know, so I, I advised them to go to the doctor. Uh, and then this was like the common one. Um, the trees were just ridiculously heavy. Um, the best elves in the world work for, work for us, but they were damaging floors, whether it was the water or we were scratching it or any of these things. Um, the list just kind of goes on. We had a, a first Christmas that was ruined. A, a baby's first Christmas didn't get to enjoy a, a nice tree, and we got a, a nice long email about that one. Um, and, and what was bad about it wasn't, well, there's so many things bad about it, but what really felt terrible about it is that I was used to these quick, short successes of, of a popsicle business. And, there was really nothing I could do to make it right. Um, these people had a bad experience. I could give them a refund. We could even bring them another tree, but they had to deal with this whole fiasco. Um, and, and when you're going through this, you kind of realize that these bad feelings, the really, really, really bad feelings, um, I mean, Christmas, everyone loves it. In this Christmas break that we had, if you celebrate it, if you don't, you might just be indifferent towards it. Uh, we, in this break we had, um, I can remember, I'm always kind of just like excited about the future, but I can remember being like, I don't want Christmas to come nor end, not because of my presence or Santa, but just I don't want, I don't want to see these people again. <laughs> not because I don't like them, just because I'm so disappointed in myself. Um, the bad, I guess, it just feels so much more terrible than the worse. Than the, the bad feels so much more terrible than the good. The good, you just brush off. Yeah, that should have happened. But the bad sticks with you. Uh, it stays with you a really long time. Um, and I have a physical reminder. Each time when I go back out to our farm to see where these Christmas trees were supposed to live, uh, instead of seeing that, that beautiful sight, I get to look at a large football field size uh, field of dead Christmas trees. Thank you.